Hello, this is David Pally, and in this series of videos, I want to talk about how to rig larger volume characters, or simply put, how to rig fat characters. So what I'm going to talk about is a joint-based approach to control the volume of characters that are larger, specifically in the torso area. Now there's a few things I want to talk about before we get into actually rigging or, or at least talking about the process here. Certain characters, especially large characters like this, even when you get to an extreme pose, it's you're going to get collapsing geometry. It kind of, it, it is what it is. You know, if a character bends this far, it's going to collapse pretty much no matter what. And for a number of reasons. One, that it just, the character cannot bend this far down. And two, most of the work is done bending down by the center of gravity here. So you can use these in combo. So you'll have a little bend in your back, but the torso will also be doing a, a large amount of the work as well. In fact, uh, or the, the center of gravity will be doing most of the heavy lifting when it comes to bending over. So keep that in mind. A large character, it'd be very difficult to have it bend down, you know, like 30 to 60 degrees and have it look normal. Even in extreme poses like that, it's just, it's not going to work the way you want it to. Also, since this is a joint-based approach, a lot of film rigs at this point are not going to use a setup like this. Um, this would be more so for games or TV rigs, um, specifically game rigs because it is joint-based and game engines love joints. Um, but a film rig, you know, especially, you know, if you get into the, you know, high quality film rigs like Mar like Disney and Marvel and Pixar and things like that, they have a tendency to use more dynamic methods, you know, fat layers, muscle layers, skin, all of that. So this setup is more so just for joints. It's definitely geared more towards a game type of setup or a TV setup, you know, something of, you know, not using dynamics the way that um, like a film rig would be used. So the setup, if we start to rotate the character around, so you can see we're getting pretty, oops, that also helped to select all the controls here. There we go. So when I rotate the control here, you see bending backwards is fine. And it, it almost always is when it comes to weighting you know, painting weights and having spine movement on the character. It's usually when the character bends forward that you start to run into some collapsing geometry. Now we're really not running into much here. And even if I look at the geometry, you see we're not getting really any collapsing geometry here. <clears throat> and the reason is uh, we're using a series of volume control joints or placeholder joints. These are designed to move with the basic spine rig, but you know, move at a percentage of the main joints. Um, and I will turn on the joints so you can see them. So this is a pretty basic, the, the base rig here is pretty basic. I mean, it's a five joint system. You know, um, it is a small number of joints, but as you can see here, especially in the torso area, it's pretty low poly character. So, um, you know, having a large number of joints is kind of unnecessary considering how, you know, low volume the character, uh, low topology, the character is. Um, so we have a series of joints hooked up to the main joints here, and these joints are designed to move a fraction of the main joint here. Um, so if I bend backwards, you can see here that the joints move the exact same as the main joints here, but if I bend forward, now you start to see the difference. Is you can see these front joints here not only are not moving as much as the original joints, but you can see they're also kind of extending outwards a little bit here to kind of give the, the you know, uh, the kind of visual look of squashing. Uh, so as, you know, as, you're, as you bend forward, your stomach muscles and fat here kind of squash, and that's kind of the effect we're trying to get here. Um, and the same goes for the sides as well. You can see here we're getting some compression and some squashing here as the character bends side to side. Now I don't have some side joints or back joints like on this base 
uh, join the spine here. And that's just because, you know, you can see there's legs at this point. So uh, there's not as much need for joints on the side. And you see the tail is already here. So there's not much need for joints in the back here since it would, you know, conflict with the tail. Um, so you can see we have some volume control joints here. And the handy thing is um, we have attributes here to control not only how much it rotates or how much it doesn't rotate with the spine, but also how far it extends out. So um, let's say I bend the character forward here. Well, if I go to the center of gravity here, I have controls not only to adjust how much it rotates here, but also how far it extends out. Um, and so you can see some of the joints extending out here. And this is, this is all set up with nodes. Um, so this I found this to be a very handy way to, you know, uh, maintain volume on a character without having to, um, you know, work, use dynamics and how to keep it with uh, keep using joints, which help is helpful for, for game rigs. And this doesn't necessarily have to apply to just the torso here. Um, if you look at some of the joints that I have over here. You can see I have volume control joints for you know large areas that would bend quite a bit. So the knees, front and back, ankles, um, elbows in the front of the arm, the hand here as well. So you can see, you know, we're getting some uh, bulge here as the hand bends backwards because again he is a very thick character. So um, traditionally you would see some collapsing geometry here, but we're able to avoid that with um, just some node base setup here. So you can see here, look at the topology, you can see the bulging effect here. Um, so it it's very handy for the torso, especially since that tends to be the largest volume area of a character, um, but it can be helpful in other places as well. But I'm gonna focus on the torso here and kind of just show you how I set it up. Um, so in this first video, just to kind of show you like it, just how it looks when it, when it deforms and when it moves. Um, and then in the next coming videos, I will show you, or at least I might, depending on, you know, how long it takes, it might only be one more video, but I will go over um, the process of setting this up, just using a, a simple set of nodes. But I'll just show, it's just a process I want to show because when I started out, there really wasn't a whole lot of information on how to rig, you know, large volume or fat characters. So I just wanted to kind of put this out there just to kind of help people that might um, kind of might have hit a roadblock when it comes to uh, large volume characters like this. So we'll move over to the next video where we'll go over the actual setup.